Hey guys, I'm John and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. We've already covered the original double slit experiment as well as two of the main variations, the which way and the delayed choice variations. Today we'll be covering the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment that builds on top of the previous knowledge. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and let's get started. In order for this video to make any sense, you should definitely check out my previous video on the original double slit experiment and the which way and delayed choice variations. For the rest of this video, I'll assume that you've already watched it and can follow along. So as you should already know at this point, every detection that we try to make about which path the particle took results in the destruction of the interference pattern. At this point, we also know that it doesn't matter if the detection is made before the slits or after the slits, it still ends up destroying the interference pattern, as we saw in the delayed choice variation. One thing that we need to talk about though is that the observation of a particle is never just an observer looking at a particle from a distance. What's actually required is a device that can detect it and it always ends up acting like an interaction with the real world, in other words, outside of the quantum system. With the light source being coherent, all particles have the same coherent waveforms as they travel. When they hit uh, detectors, it messes with this coherence and affects the particle or wave. So the real challenge is in performing a measurement without collapsing the wave function. Since physicists are extremely resourceful, they came up with a way of doing exactly that. What they did was to use a very specific crystal that absorbs incoming photons and converts them into two new photons that each have half of the energy of the original photon. This pair is also quantum entangled, which is another matter entirely that would require its own video to explain. For now, the only thing that's important to know is that particles that are entangled are able to pass information instantaneously across any distance. And yes, this means it transfers that information faster than the speed of light. So to get back to the experiment, when the pair is created by the crystal, the goal is to then send one photon very normally to the end screen to see the resulting pattern, which is the signal photon. While we perform measurements on its twin, which is the idler photon. This should avoid the problem of messing with the coherence of the signal photon because we never interact with it. So let's start by taking a look at a very simplified example of the elements we'll see so that we can familiarize ourselves with how the actual experiment will look like. We'll start with the light source here on the left that will shoot photons towards the right. At this point, it will encounter a beam splitter that will let half of the photons through while reflecting the other half, essentially separating the photons into two different paths. Next, we'll reflect them once more with a simple mirror so that they can eventually intersect, and that's going to be the portion we'll examine. So at this point, we can easily conclude that if a photon is moving right, it will have been reflected at the beam splitter and taken the red path. Similarly, we can also easily conclude that a photon moving up will have taken the blue path and will have went through the beam splitter. So at this point, we have the which way information because we can easily conclude which path the photons took. The quantum eraser part of this experiment happens when we scramble or obscure this information of which path the photons took by using another beam splitter at that intersection. Now we can no longer conclude which path the photons took because they could all either be reflected or have went through the last beam splitter, essentially erasing the which way information. So now that you have a grasp of how we can erase the information of which path the photons took, let's take a look at how the actual quantum eraser experiment is set up. To begin with, the light source shoots out photons in the same way as the original double slit experiment, and it goes through the slits also in the same way as the original. Where this new variation starts is at the crystal on the other side of the slits. This crystal is the one that will convert photons into an entangled pair, and since it's after the slits, it makes it a delayed choice variation. 
hence the full name Delayed Choice Quantum Eraser Experiment. After the crystal is a prism that causes the entangled photons to diverge from each other, essentially splitting them so that we can treat them as completely separate entities. So now that we have the photons separated into an entangled pair and diverged from each other, we can put the first detector which will act as the end screen that we're familiar with. We'll call it detector S and it will catch the photons that get diverged upwards, regardless of which slit it went through. This is the detector that we'll be using to see whether we're destroying the interference pattern or not by performing observations on the idler twin. The only thing we use on the way to the end screen is a lens that will retarget the photons to the detector that catches the signal photons, so that at the detector they land in the same place. Now, for the photons that are diverged downwards, we'll use another prism to further diverge the photons into two non-parallel paths. At this point, we can put mirrors that will reflect the photons into detectors A and B, and we'll talk about what happens when the experiment is set up this way. It's also important to note that the A and B detectors are set up along a longer path, so the signal twin will always hit detector S well before the idler twin hits detectors A or B. As you can see at this point, when a photon hits detector A, we can easily conclude that it went through slit A since it's the only possible path. The same thing with detector B that can only trigger when the photon went through slit B. Even though we can tell where the idler photon came from, we still never interacted with their signal twin, and it reached detector S before we performed an observation. So the coherence that we already talked about should have been preserved, and there shouldn't be any reason that the signal twin would stop acting like a wave, which should give us an interference pattern. So at this point, I'll encourage you to pause the video and think about what you think you might see on detector S when we perform observations with detectors A and B. Will you see an interference pattern by just having observed the idler twin or not? If you guess that the interference pattern would be destroyed, then you are correct. So the signal photon reached detector S and landed somewhere according to its wave function, which should yield an interference pattern. Later, the idler photon reaches detector A or B, and somehow retroactively influences the previous landing position of its entangled partner. This is already awesome, and you might already be impressed, but wait, there's even more to this experiment. So now, instead of the mirrors that reflect the beams to detectors A and B, we'll use beam splitters to reflect half of the photons to detectors A and B, and let the other half through to detectors C and D. These new detectors are the quantum eraser, and their job is to destroy information about the path the photons took, essentially erasing the which way part of this experiment, and as we also saw in the simpler example. So the only thing we'll add here for the photons that are let through are two mirrors that will reflect them back to another beam splitter. This makes it so that when photons reach detectors C and D, we can no longer know which slit the photons originally came through, because now they could have come from either slit and ended up in either the C or D detectors. So when we were only using detectors A and B, we ended up destroying the interference pattern. What do you think will happen now if we only use detectors C and D that no longer have the which way information about the photons path? Will we see an interference pattern emerge or will it still be destroyed like before? Feel free to pause the video here and think about it. If you guess that the interference pattern would be restored, then you are correct. So simply by obscuring the information about which path the photon took, it's able to go back to behaving like a wave and go through both slits at the same time, restoring the interference pattern. It's as if the universe says, alright, the observer lost the information about which slit we went through, so it's safe to have gone through both of them again. It's really as if every single time we have the which way information about the path of a photon, the universe doesn't allow it to have behaved like a wave at all. 
it's also clearly able to retroactively change the result of its entangled partner, even if the measurement is performed after the signal photon should already have ended its journey and landed in one spot as a wave. This uh, gives birth to a very interesting discussion about cause and effect and how we perceive it. So let's recap what happened in this experiment. First, we produce the interference pattern like in the original double slit experiment by sending out single photons. Second, we add a which way detection that marks through which slit the photon passed through and demonstrate that the interference pattern is destroyed. In other words, the existence of the which way information causes the destruction of the interference pattern. And third, we add another step that erases the which way information and demonstrate that the interference pattern is restored due to no longer having the which way information of which slit the photon went through. What we can take away from this experiment is that it doesn't matter whether the information is erased before or after the signal photon already hit the detection screen. As long as the which way information exists somewhere, the interference pattern is destroyed. This also includes retroactively rewriting the past if the detection of the which way information happens after the signal photon already hit the detection screen. It also doesn't matter how far apart they are or how long after one landed an observation is made. We could have one entangled photon land somewhere while an observation is made on the other side of the galaxy billions of years later uh, and the first photon will still have been collapsed. This is absolutely amazing and part of why science is so stimulating. On top of raising questions about causality or even retro causality, this also brings up other questions about the interpretations of quantum mechanics. In total, there are more than a dozen different ways of interpreting how the quantum world works and none of them have been proven false as of yet. They each differ fundamentally on questions such as if quantum mechanics is deterministic or random, which elements are considered real, and what is the nature of measurement, among others. The solution to why we get these results from the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment may lie in the fact that the photons are entangled. Since entangled particles can affect each other instantaneously across any distance, even faster than light, it could explain why the idler photon is able to change the behavior of the signal photon. There's also the fact that photons don't experience time while traveling at the speed of light, so that might also be part of why the results are the way they are. Perhaps future variations of this experiment will help us establish uh, which interpretation of quantum mechanics is correct or which we need to review or change to better reflect reality. So what do you think about this variation of the double slit experiment? Does it make you appreciate science any more than you already did? Let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear what you guys think about this one. By the way, my Discord server is also currently open to the public and I'd like to grow the chat into a nice active community of science lovers. So if you're interested, check the description for the invite link because I'd love to have more direct contact with you guys. We're about 40 people right now and growing slowly, so come join us. If you have any suggestions about science topics or recent science news that you'd like me to cover, don't hesitate to write it down in the comments. Also, if you have any science questions for the series where I answer your science questions, ask me that too in the comments. For more interesting science content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification to be notified of all my uploads. You can also check out my website at respectyourintellect.com for all the information and videos on this channel, as well as a few other things. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.